That's it for the PlayStation 2 games. I also have some PlayStation games, only two though. Uh, Einhander, Hander, Einhander, Hanger, Oh, I guess I also have Gran Turismo. I didn't realize that was on the back there. Okay, well, I have three games. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Hunter, whatever this is. It's a shooter, and it sounds like it would probably be obscure because this doesn't sound like a very catchy title, but maybe it's not obscure, but I don't know about it, really. I mean, I know about it because I own it now, but... Yeah, I can't really play much of this because we don't have a working memory card for PlayStation games. Uh, Gran Turismo, I know, is a realistic racing game with real cars and stuff, so that's kind of cool, I guess. And, uh... <laughs> puzzle... Wait, what, what order do you read the letters in this title? Because, like, the super is behind everything else in the title there. It says Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. I guess that's the order that you read everything in, but it could be Puzzle Fighter 2 Super Turbo. I don't know. I think titles like that are weird, but... If you've played Tetris Attack, it's nothing like that, but it's almost as fun. Now moving on to the Super Nintendo games. Donkey Kong Country. I like Donkey Kong Country. It's a good Donkey Kong Country. It's a good, good game. Good. Frogger, this one's funny because it's old. Sim City. I should probably play this again purely for nostalgic reasons. All I remember is that all the disasters were really fun to wreak havoc onto the cities. But I don't know if I have the patience to actually build cities anymore. But I do remember that any time that I would ever have an, a little island in SimCity, I would always put a, a little strip of road on it and call it Road Island. <laughs> I was so clever! Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, 3, and Lost Levels, otherwise known as Super Mario Wall Stars. Oh yeah, Super Mario RPG. Definitely takes the cake <laughs> of second favorite RPG of all time. Thousand Year Door is still the first. Hey guys, it's Super Mario Kart! I think the flat levels are weird. I know the Super Nintendo couldn't really do much else except it had Mode 7 and they just worked with that, but... I might still have to say that Mario Kart 64 is more fun than... I don't know, I have to play this one again. I tried Let's Playing this once. It didn't work so well. I might try again someday. I want to Let's Play this game. I'm just bad at it. A lot of people have talked about the wonders of Super Metroid, and I really should finish playing this game. Every time I've played it, I've just gotten so completely lost that I've never picked it up again. And it's kind of a problem for me, because every time that I play this game, I want to start out at the very beginning so that I know what's going on, because if I don't know what's going on, then how can I continue playing? And then whenever I get stuck really early on, I just forget about the game, and then I come back way later again and just start over again. What's wrong with me? I should just open up a save file that I already have and see where that goes. Otherwise, I'll probably never finish this game ever. I forgot to mention, I love the atmosphere, though. Super Scope 6? What the heck is this game? <laughs> Original Star Fox with the best cartridge art of all time. Star Fox is looking like such a pimp, or whatever. He's like a human doll. I don't even know what he is. I've beaten this game once. I'm pretty sure it was on easy mode, and I probably found a way to get a lot of lives. I'm not, I'm not really sure. But that was very difficult. I don't know if I'm ever going to beat this game again. I don't think it's likely. Best puzzle game ever. Ever. Yeah, I have Street Fighter 2. I think we used to have the other version of Street Fighter 2 that was also on the Super Nintendo. I don't know where that is now, though. It was like Super Fighter 2 Ultra, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's a fighting game. I already said that I don't really like fighting games that much, but you do a whole lot of streeting in this game that takes place in fights. Tetris and Dr. Mario! Two games that are super duper 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 popular that I suck at! Everyone loves Yoshi's Island. And if you don't love Yoshi's Islands, then you've been sucking on stardust in space for the last 113 years of your lifetime. Link to the Past. The only time that I ever came close to beating this game, I was in the final boss, and then for whatever reason, this silly cartridge decided to delete all the save data. Thanks a lot, cartridge! 
Zelda Skyward Sword, one of my favorite Zelda games. Oh, wait, we were on the Super Nintendo games. Oh, well, uh, now we're not. Yeah, because I just like the way this whole game feels. It just feels very cardboardy and very, very hard and, and dynamic. That's the box. Donkey Kong Country Returns. I haven't played this a whole lot since I got it. I played it a whole lot before I got it because one of my relatives had it. Uh, and I was playing it whenever I visited with them, but um, very awesomely designed levels in this game. It has so much variety, but I think it's a little tainted by the controls. The controls are very clunky. I think that these ga this game is like the definition of clunky controls. And I know a lot of people would disagree, but I just feel like it's centered a little bit too much around the beat of the game. But the minecart levels are frickin' amazing. Interesting thing about Guitar Hero 3, about 99% of the time that we've had this game, we never had guitars. We only had Wiimotes. And playing this game with Wiimotes is a lot harder than playing it with Wiimotes plus a guitar. But now we have the guitars. Honestly, it was pretty fun just to see how far we could get with songs just with a Wiimote, because the, the controls are really awkward with just a Wiimote. So there's like a button at the end and a button on the top and then a button over here and then another button over there and it's just like... Uh. Mario Kart Wii is another one of those games that I haven't really played much since I got it. I do have the little controller thing, or the big controller things and everything that are the wheels that you use to drive because usually whenever you drive a car you use a wheel as opposed to a square or a, uh, a toucan or a marshmallow or something. Yeah, it just is different from other Mario Kart games. It doesn't necessarily make it bad. I just prefer other Mario Kart games more than this one because it doesn't have those differences. Like the fact that it has 12 places instead of 8 and the fact that you use the wheels and stuff like that, it just makes it weird. I'm actually really fond of the box art on this game. Unfortunately, I don't have the box art for this game, but it's Klonoa on the Wii. And it's a remake of Klonoa Door to Phantom Isle on the uh, first PlayStation, if you've heard of that. I don't know. It's, as I've said with Klonoa 2, underrated, I think. has lots of puzzle platforming elements to it. And uh, in this version of the game in particular, it gives you a whole lot of cool things once you beat the game. I don't know if it gives you anything if you beat it 100% which seems honestly a little bit tedious, but maybe not. I don't know. I just think that the whole feel of this game is very artistic and cool. And I'm going to play it again at some point. And it's also sad. New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Uh, I like it a lot. Okay, first experience with Okami. Uh, whenever I first played this game, I played it for maybe half an hour. Did not like it one bit. Then I saw some of Chuck Conroy's Let's Play of the game, and I kind of got a feel for what the gameplay of the game is actually supposed to be like. And then I started playing it again, and I love it. It's an amazing game. Go play it now. It's... wow. And it's also very long. It's a very long game. You're not going to finish it anytime soon. Rayman Origins. Ha. Ah. Like, almost as soon as I got this game, I loved it to bits, and I've played the heck out of it. And it's pretty much one of the best games I've ever played. Really, quite honestly, it's definitely one of my favorites. And the best way to describe it, I think, is, like, it's as fast as Sonic, except it does everything right that Sonic does wrong. It's so perfectly maneuverable, and it's super fast, and it's just great! All right, these are unusual. Salmon Max and Salmon Max, the first season and the second season. If you don't know, Salmon Max is a point-and-click game series made by Telltale Games. And the reason I got them on the Wii is because I didn't know of a good way to get them for the PC. I don't think that this version was, uh, or this season was out yet for PC, so that's why I couldn't get it there. But yeah, the Wii versions, as far as I can tell, are not as good. I just wanted to own these games because they're very memorable, hilarious experiences, and they lead to quite a few amazing point-and-click puzzles that are much cleverer than anything I've come up with, so... Super Paper Mario. This is the first Paper Mario game that I played, so 
I, I figured that I would like this one as opposed to the other Paper Mario games because they were, you know, RPGs. I didn't like RPGs. I was staying away from RPGs. So I went with this, which is a platformer, and really, really enjoyed it. It was my favorite game for a little while. I mean, I wasn't really thinking too much about it at the time. Now I realize that it has a whole lot of flaws, but still, it's... I don't see why people bash it as much as they do, because this is an excellent game with an excellently told story and lots of clever ideas, so I'm going to let's play this. Whenever it becomes a thing, it, it'll become a thing. Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. Galaxy 1's really good. I beat it like five times and then I got bored of it because I beat it five times. Uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2 is way better. It's it's really well done. I like it. Feels like Mario World. I got brawl! Got bored of it three days after release. And Zack and Wiki, which is another point and click style game, except it's only on the Wii because it makes great use of the Wii Mote controls, so I recommend this just for its amazing puzzles. It doesn't it doesn't have much replay value, but it's great. And that does it for the Wii games, so I'm going to the GameCube games now, and I'm starting with 1080 Avalanche, which nobody in our family has really played that much. It's a lot like 1080 Snowboarding, except with avalanches, which you'd think would make it cooler, but not really. As someone who's gone to Newgrounds for years and years and years, I had to show my support to Tom Fulp at some point by buying at least one game from the Behemoth, and I have Alien Hominid on the GameCube, since Alien Hominid is pretty much on every game system ever uh, for its generation. And uh, it's, it's fun, it's enjoyable. I just don't ever really pick it up because it's, uh, it reminds me a whole lot of Metal Slug. It's practically the same game. And I don't think I would like Metal Slug that much, but I like the artwork in this one, so maybe that's why I enjoy it. I don't know. It's fun to play with friends, though. Definitely fun to play with friends. Animal Crossing! No. Donkey Konga! Donkey Konga! Being a really big fan of Harvest Moon 64, my sister also had to get Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life on the GameCube because, uh, well, it was the new game. It was big and it was 3D and it was all this cool stuff. And uh, it turns out it's a very, very slow-moving game. Of course, you'd picture a game about harvesting to be pretty slow, but this one's especially so. But she played it for a very long time, and I think eventually got tired of it whenever I... I think I probably accidentally deleted one of the save files, because I was young and stupid at the time. So that was detrimental to progress, and I just spit everywhere. I'm really impressed with Kirby Air Ride's ability to make a racing game out of just a control stick and one button. Like, none of the earlier Mario Karts even were able to do that. They at least used two buttons, and this uses one, and it's a big 3D adventure with multiple modes and stuff. I just think it's really cool. I like how it's done. And the checkboxes, the big giant checklists that will never ever be filled in a million years, I think that feature is cool too. Even though it makes me feel like I've accomplished nothing in life. That's what Kirby does. I'm getting really tired. Boom! Ba da ba bum! Ba da ba bum ba 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 noticeably harder. It's amazing what they did to make it harder. I don't even know what they did to make it harder, but they made it harder. I haven't beaten it yet. I don't think I've even beaten it, just beaten it. And I definitely haven't beaten it 100%, so... Yeah, I think I ran into a glitch somewhere in it where you couldn't proceed at the end of a level because it just didn't let you. And I think the same thing happened with LEGO Indiana Jones because they didn't change the formula at all, so... Uh, but I don't own that one, which I'm kind of thankful for because the LEGO games started being the same after a while. Luigi's Mansion. Mario Golf Toadstool Tour takes a really boring thing like golf and Mario-wises it and makes it good again.
Mario Kart Double Dash, my favorite of all the Mario Kart games by far, no question. Not even just because it has two characters at once, which I think is a cool idea in and of itself, but also because I think the levels are designed really well and the music's great and everything about it is just really fast-paced and cool and colorful and cool and colorful and coolerful. But it's still not as good as Diddy Kong Racing. Mario Party 5. People don't like this Mario Party. I like this Mario Party. I think it's really cool. Especially Leaf Leap and Goomba Hotel. Mario Power Tennis. 